الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد تناي بإذن الله تعالى يوم السبت السادس 1424 the 1424th year of the migration of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم from Mecca Medina the 10th day of the 10th of Safar which is in agreement with 2003 April the 12th we study an issue inshallah ta'ala uh, which is not our normal matters because those we do on Monday Wednesday and Friday but since some brothers requested that there be a class so that they can benefit matter of fact many of those who ask don't seem to be here but, I can, but that's how it is I guess and uh, like they say once the smoke clears you'll see if it's a donkey you're riding or a horse and, uh, so things will always be clarified now we know how serious they are we deal with the issue of jihad briefly it's an extensive issue a detailed issue but we deal with it from the standpoint that you hear people run their mouth all the time individuals who basically shouldn't be running their mouths you find them living in a kafir country under a ruler that they don't have to declare kafir he's already a kafir talking about we want to do this in Iraq and we want to do this in Afghanistan and we we should do this and where are the ulama and all this type of madness as if this fool did not find anyone to blame on the face of the earth except except the scholars this is the only one that uh, he found to talk about meanwhile you find that they don't know the issues in the case particularly in Afghanistan they don't know who what is Afghanistan who was ruling Afghanistan they don't know the Taliban, they don't know the Aqeedah of the Taliban, they don't know if it's permissible to fight with the Taliban, you know, beside the Taliban, against whoever. They don't know any of this. Situation comes up in Iraq, they don't know the Ba'ath Party, they don't know Saddam Hussein, they don't know the rulings regarding Saddam Hussein. And the people that they want to run over there and defend are the, main, are the same people that over here they don't even consider their brothers really. They go in inside their stores and they see them selling uh, swine and, and, and alcohol and, and tobacco and pornography and lottery tickets and they say nothing to them. Yet when a war comes up they want to run over there and, and supposedly we're supposed to believe they want to die beside them now. Don't even offer them the siha in this country. Advice, say brother, takillah. Akhi, you should be selling this. Akhi, you know anything about tawheed. Akhi, you know anything about sunnah. Akhi, akhi, akhi. Nothing of that. But then the emotionalism starts to talk when something goes down and it's like these are... What do you think the vast majority of the people in Iraq are like? That guy in that corner store, that's what they're like. You think, you think they're upon sunnah? You think that their toes are above their ankles and their beards are to their chest and they're praying according to sunnah and they're fasting according to sunnah and there's no interest in their life as far as reba and usury and these things and there's nothing haram? You think they're listening to Iza to Quran and Kareem? Any broadcast of the Quran on the radio, you think they listen to music. So this is the, how far we are with emotionalism. That you have individuals who talk when they should shut up. Who talk and speak when they should listen. And the issue is such that they will talk about the scholars as if the scholars are the ones wrong. As if it never reached their ears that the Prophet ﷺ said, that Allah said in Hadith Qudsi, من أذى لي وليا he who harms a close servant of mine أذنته بالحب I have declared war upon him there's no doubt that the scholars are the closest to Allah تبارك تعالى العلماء العاملين the scholars who act upon the deen are the closest to Allah تبارك تعالى so they are first and foremost those who are re, uh, being talked about in this great hadith the hadith of the wali and you, you want to mess with, uh, you know, be at war with, Allah to be at war with you? Adha waliyan. Harm, harm a close servant of Allah. That's all you got to do. Talk about the scholars. Where are the ulama? What did the ulama say? 
يا 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 جاهل يا مسكين the ulama said a lot but you don't read what they say the ulama wrote a lot but you don't read what they write the ulama stated a lot but you're not listening you don't even know where to go you don't even know who the ulama are they're speaking constantly but you don't hear them because to you they're non-existent to you they're non-existent so this issue any sparks a, and places a bad taste in your mouth because it's, it's getting ridiculous. Twelve years ago we heard it. Gulf War. Where's the ulama? We got to do something. You know, Afghanistan we heard it. Where's the ulama? We got to do something. Ulama not speaking. We need the jihadis and brothers who bought jihad. Honey, you're a Yahud. Cousins of apes and swines. That a lot of that turned turn, turn, some of them into apes and swines and monkeys. I need monkeys. They they took Palestine, Quds, Jerusalem. Now, since 1948, and you ain't did nothing about that. Done nothing about it whatsoever. Hindus and Sikh pouring gasoline upon Muslim women and men and letting them burn them in the street. Taking the Babri Mosque in India and tearing it down brick by brick with their bare hands. You haven't moved yet. Christian Serbs taking Muslim women and implanting, at, raping them and, and then implanting in them the embryo of dogs. You haven't done nothing yet. Where you been? Kashmir. Philippines. Where you been? Now this situation comes up and now you talk and you run your mouth. And the issue is you're not in a, a Muslim country. You live in a Catholic country. We don't call for this madness of insurrection. We don't call for this foolishness of revolution by talk and by making... Uh, Gorilla-like moves and urban warfare. That's madness. We don't call for it. It's not sound, akhlin, or shara'an. Intellectually or legislatively. But since you call for it, why you ain't made no move towards this kafir here? Why is the Salibi, the Christian here, safe from you? Why is Yahudi down the street safe from you? Why is the Hindu or the Buddhist or the atheist or the secular safe from you? Because you're all about talk. And things have been placed in your head, in your mind, and in your methodology, and in your program, that you don't know where it came from. Just was was. Whispering from shaitan. Either the shayateen of men, or the shayateen of jinn. So you have nothing to do but talk about the inheritance of the prophets, the scholars, those who sit, and with the book of Allah Ta'ala for years, those who sit with the Sunnah for years, those who explain the issues of the deen to the people, those who distribute the, the guidance that Allah Ta'ala has sent down, this is who you talk about. Where's the scholars? Where's the scholars? Why the scholars are here but you don't know it. This jihad matter is like any other matter of adeen. It is an ibadah, a worship. And worship have conditions. And of the first conditions of any worship is ilm, knowledge of it. Got to know what you're doing. The ignoramuses who want to talk about jihad without knowing what jihad is, without referring to the scholars, are like the individual who's always talking about, I want to make wudu. I got to make a wudu. I got to, got to get me a wudu. He said, well, go ahead and make a wudu. I don't know how. Don't know how. Don't know how to wash his hands. Don't know what to say. Bismillah. Don't know the, the conditions of wudu, the arka, the shirut of wudu, the sunan of wudu, the muptilat of wudu. Don't know it. He said, now I got to make my salah. It's about salah. Where's the scholars, man? It's about salah. I mean, you got to get on this salah, man. Someone said, well, make salah. Scholars ain't doing nothing. You make salah. I don't know how. This is their reality. They don't know nothing about your heart. Jihad, barakallah fikum, is not something new to the Muslims. 
Jihad, Berakalafikum, is not something new to the scholars. Jihad, there's a chapter of it in every fifth book. There's a section dealing with it in every book of Hadith. It is something that the Muslims was part of their behavior and their program. When they were upon Tawheed and Sunnah and Minhaj Salaf Salah. So this is a matter that must be understood. There are two articles recently presented on the Salafi uh, network or internet, Sahab. One of them is called the Fatawa of the Ulama regarding Jihad. Statements of the scholars, their rulings regarding Jihad. That one was kept rather detailed and so I left it. The other one was a Tawjihat Salafiyya. Salafi directives. Fi Kadaya Jihadiyya. In the matters of Jihad. Li Fadilat al-Shaykh Ubayd ibn Abdullah al-Jabiri Hafizahullah. So this is what will take some of this and hopefully it will open or bring about awareness for many of us for you know, many of us don't know these issues and we let, and we let the, the Hizbis irritate us and corner us as if we have to be on the defensive and as if we don't know the program and we don't have the answers running scared as if we are ignorant of this matter and letting them have the floor and they should never have the floor because they don't have knowledge and the Salafi has knowledge bihi yuqatil with that he fights bidun ilm laysa lahu salah without knowledge he doesn't have any weaponry this has been stated by the great ones of the Minhaj, the great Ayyimma, and it's not Salah, chain of transmission, the knowledge of trans- chain of transmission, a hadith, it's a weapon. وَمَنْ لَا سَلَحْ لَهُ The one who doesn't have a weapon, كَيْفِ يُقَاتِلْ How does he fight? You're standing in an area where there are 72, 72 different firaq around you, and you're the one upon Salafiyya. You got everybody know everybody else and you're the only stranger. Everybody doing everything everybody else is used to and you're the only one doing something that's not familiar. And then you're approached and these discussions take place. And you're without knowledge regarding this issue. Hadalayaslah. This doesn't benefit and this is not correct. The Sheikh says, Havidahullah, the su'al, the question, ما حكم الجهاد What is the ruling of jihad regarding jihad دون إذن ولي الأمر والوالدين Without the permission of ولي الأمر Those in authority and your parents What is the ruling regarding jihad Without the permission of ولي الأمر Those in authority والوالدين Anybody can answer this. Who's the wali al-amr? Huh? Takhtalifun? You differ on this? Who's the wali al-amr? He said, Amir al-Mu'mini. The khalifa for where? One khalifa? No. Come on, that's not the reality we're living in. Who's the wali al-amr? He said that ulama, that's part of the picture. That I tell Allah, I tell Rasulullah, uli amri minkum, obey Allah and obey the messenger of the authority amongst you. First, are two people, the scholars and the rulers. So wali al-amr is the rulers. So wali al-amr of uh, Saudi is Fahim. Wali al-amr of Kuwait, Ahl al-Sabah, I mean Sabah, right? Well, you don't have to know. Anyway, the point is, the wali or amr of the place is that wali of that, that one in authority of that place. I want to make sure you don't think that it's the imam of the masjid. 
Because there was that type of understanding running around here. I remember arguing with some brothers about it. They took usul al-sunnah. He says, well, you have to obey the imam. You have to obey the wali al-amr. You have to obey the amir. I said, well, do you think that means what, what you're doing? You won't find it in the annals of history. You won't find nobody saying that type of foolishness. Anyway, the point is, the wali al-amr, ruler, the one who can what? Make tanfid, execute the legislation, send out armies, huh? put in place laws. This is so we don't think that when we see Jamil al you know what I'm saying, with some cuffs on him, you know, say, oh man, they got that real woman, man, you know, getting in the back of the van, right? Oh man, they got the Willy Lamar, what's happening, right? We are another imam of a masjid. You know, they go up in there, five or six brothers coming out, out of there. Oh man, Wali Lamar is gone, man. We ain't got no Amir now. That's another thing, this Amir thing. You know, where, where you got to obey him and do what he says. You know, you better, you know, do what he say, man. Why? Well, you know, Allah say, I tell you, Allah, I tell you, Rasul, I'm Raminkum. That's madness. It's never meant like that. So the ruler of a country, he has his army, he has his police go out. He has this. He has that. He's running the show. That's the Wali Al-Amr. Ajaba Fadilah the Sheikh, Hafizahullah. The noble Sheikh responded, Alhamdulillah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ala Abdul, Ala Abdullahi wa Rasulah. And any peace and prayers be upon the servant of Allah and his messenger, Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahabih. Wa man wallahu amma ba'd. And upon his family and his companions and all those who are loyal to, loyal to him. And to proceed. فَإِنَّ الْجِحَادِ Verily the jihad الَّذِي Now he gives the definition of jihad. The jihad الَّذِي هُوَ كِتَالِ الْأَعْدَى Which is the fighting of the enemy. أَعْدَى الله, The enemy of Allah. من الْكُفَّارِ From the disbelievers. وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ And all that associate partners with Allah. إِعْلَاءً لِكَلِمَةِ اللَّهِ to raise and make superior the word of Allah. Huh? What about this jihad? Sharia tin baqiya. It's sharia that remains. It's part of the legislation that remains. That will stay. Huh? Wa farida tin muhkama. An obligation, clear cut obligation. When, when you find the ability and the means to do so. When you find the qudra, the ability, the power, the strength, and a du'a'i or the causes or that which calls to it, to do so. Hatta yarath Allah, until Allah inherits the al-ard, the earth, wa man alayha, and all that are upon it. Wa ha huna ila umur. And I point out here certain matters. Al Amr Awal, the first matter. And who lays the ahad. It's not for anyone. Kaina man kan, whoever he is, and yet will a jihad enough. That he starts making a declaration of jihad by himself. Jihad, we gotta do jihad. Come on man, jihad. Do no wali al amr. Without huh, the person the ruler, the one in authority, men and Muslimin from the Muslims. And this means what? The type of jihad he's talking about, he's going to talk about the different types. There's Fard Ayn, that which is obligatory upon everybody. There's Fard Kifai, that which is obligatory on Son. And if the others do it, then it's all, you know, then the other ones are not responsible because it's been done for them. And, you know, Sunnah, that which, you know, if you do, you're rewarded for, and like this. There's Jihad, uh, Talib, you know, any Jihad where you're trying to Get the people to accept Islam, jihad of da'wah, right? And that's, you know, and then there's jihad of defa, jihad of defending. So he'll talk about that, but what the point he's making here is, jihad that goes out and attacks the people. Right? Needs a wali al You can't, everybody just jump up and do what they want to do. Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, talked to a jihadi once. 
And of course, as as uh, as is often when he would talk to Ahl al Bidah, he uh, he whooped them up pretty good. He uh, overwhelmed them, and he, he you know he put them in place. One of the first issues he said is, "Do you need Amir for for jihad?" The guy hesitated. Da 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 da. da. And Sheikh Al wasn't wasn't one of those you could play with. He said, "Answer me directly." La Haida. A lot of us do Haida. Haida is where you try to avoid answering something. He was very good at cutting a person off like that. You know, like I say, a fine boxer is in a ring cutting a guy off where he don't have nowhere else to go. Sheikh Nas was like that in Jidal and Agrin. Cut him right off. Don't have nowhere to go. No room except to acquiesce. To capitulate. Huh? So the point is, he finally admitted that you have to have Amir. Then it went to the next level. Amir of who? One little group of Muslims here, one little group of Muslims there. At the admit that it's a, eventually we get to Amir not being Amir, you know, our buddy who's the Amir, you know, who we in the masjid decided, well, this is our Amir. No, it's a ruler. That's what it gets to. A ruler. So it's not for anyone, kind of mankind, whoever he is, that he decides to call jihad on him. And let's go. Yalla. Jihad. Lord. Right? It's not for anyone to do this without the idhan or duna wali al-amr. Then a da'wil al-jihad, the call to jihad, the declaration of jihad, what touch needle janud, putting the army together, touch yisa juyush, honey, putting the soldiers, lining them up and getting them ready to go out. What da'wata and calling to tanfir, that the people go out, tanfir am. Everybody hears my voice. Everybody hears the command. Everybody can, that can hear it and have it broadcasted. We're going, it's time to move. Huh? Hadi min khasa'is. Hadi min khasa'is. He's, he's particular. Specific to who? Wali al Understand what he's saying? It's of his khasa'is. His particular. His particulars. His it's specific to him. Exclusive to him. Anyone else can't do it. Anyone else from the common layman cannot do it. Anyone else in the dola, anyone else in the country can't do it. If anybody could do it, it would not be from his chasais. How is it going to be khususi? Man, this is khususi. Man. It's khususi, huh? It's just for him. It's not going to be khususi long if everybody else can do it. Right? It's specific to him. To Wali Al-Amr. And it's from the things that is, he is concerned with. From his obligations. By agreement. By agreement of what? Listen to what the Sheikh said. He doesn't say by agreement of everybody. And that's another thing. People think that everybody got to agree in the issue on deen. You got to get the agreement everybody. Like this is democracy. That kufa, the shirk, the tahuti stuff. You know, everybody got to agree. La. Ittifaq man yu'tad bi qawlihi. Ittifaq agreement by those whose statements are, have weight. Whose statement means something. Min al Ayyimatul Huda from the Imams of Guidance. Everybody's statement don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about ta'am or something, you like this dish, I like that dish, that's fine. Right? We're talking about the deen of Allah ta'ala. Everybody's statement don't mean anything. Though everybody has a tongue, everybody's not allowed to speak. And those who are to speak, there are some who their statement carries weight and you must take and some of those, it would be better if they would be silent for their sake and our sake. You don't go by their statement. And this is something that will benefit you in other areas of the deen. And because you read a book of fiqh and you see all types of names there, and you don't know who's who, everybody, you don't go by everybody, word doesn't carry weight. In the matters of Jahro Tadil in the time we're living in now. Muhammad al-Banna has said recently on Ayam online, 
Ubaid al-Jabri has said it. Salih Suhaim has said it. This one has said it. That one has said it. That the one most worthy of note who has said it, Sheikh al-Albani. Hamla liwa jarwa ta'adil bihaqqin. Carry of the banner of criticism and declaring who should be criticized. Huh? Who is weak, who is no innovation, who has some corruption in the aqeed or whatever, and the one who is ta'adil, who is praiseworthy, who is upon sunnah, who is upon istiqamah, bihaqqin, with, with right. Fi asri nahada, in our time that we're living, who is Sheikh Rabi? That is an expert in the field, the major expert. The, the one in the field of hadith who said this. So, Shaykh Rabi's qawl, his statement, يُعْطَعْدْ bihi carries weight, must be taken. And so that ignoramus that says, well, you know, that's Shaykh Rabi, but I feel this way. هَلْ يُعْطَعْدْ بِقَوْلِهِ Do you accept or does his word carry any weight? Make a distinction between those whose statements must be taken and who you must benefit from versus those who will talk and talk and talk and their statements are not to be taken. So this the Sheikh made this point. By the And this is from the particulars of the Imam. He announces jihad. This is from his important matters. This is from his obligation. This is exclusive. This is specific to him. By agreement of those whose statements are to be taken and whose statements carry weight from the Imams of guidance. The Imams of Ahl Sunnah, the Imams of Ahl Sunnah, real Ahl Sunnah, real Ahl Sunnah, not Ahl Sunnah flavor, real Ahl Sunnah. Sometimes you know you you know you you get something and it's you know, orange juice in it, and then some of the guy orange flavoring. He said, "No, I want some real orange juice." It's real Ahl Sunnah. He's talking about. For I am the Ahl Sunnah. The Imams Ahl Sunnah, he and the Mayyallifun al Kutub, when they write their books, or you send Nifuna Musannafat, they write their, and then they put together or compile their, their books, that, Elati Yedo Wanuna Fiha Maya Yajbi Tikadu, that they place in it what is obligatory for a Muslim to believe, then the Humyath Kuruna Dalik, they mention this factor in their books, that a Dawa ila Jihad, the call to jihad, the declaration of jihad, min khasais walil amr, are from the particulars of the ruler. Fayaqulun, they say, wal jihad maadin, wal jihad maadin, yani ma walil amr. Jihad must be done, yani with the ruler. In every book of Aqidah, you'll find it. You know, you don't find one from the Salaf getting up on his own, you know, walking past Sahaba, you know, I'm going to jihad, you know, carrying his own little safe around his neck, getting up on his right animal, let me get up out here, jihad, jihad, jihad. No, you don't find that type of foolishness to today. Al Amr al second matter, and the jihad min huma huwa farda'in. ومن هو ما هو فر كفاية ومن هو ما ليس كذلك سنة that the jihad from is that which is fardain obligatory upon every individual and amongst the types of jihad is that which is far kifaya obligatory upon a, a portion of the Muslims that if they fulfill it it relieves the rest of the Muslims of their responsibility and amongst it is that which is sunna which is not obligatory at all. Now, t- tell me, how are you going to know what's far kifaya of jihad? The jihad is far kifaya, or the jihad is far ain, or the jihad is sunnah without knowledge. How are you going to know it if you haven't studied it? You haven't heard it from the statements of the scholars on a cassette tape. You haven't bent your knee to sit in front of them. And hear something of that nature when they talk about it. You haven't read it in the books of the scholars. How are you going to know it? And I guarantee you the vast majority of those who are running their mouth 
because it's easier to lift the tongue and to move the tongue than anything else. Who are saying jihad, jihad, jihad? If you were to say, okay, okay, what's jihad? Jihad is farain. What's jihad is farkifaya? Okay, now what's jihad is sunnah? And tell me the difference between them. That's it. End the program. فيكون فرعين في ثلاثة في ثلاثة أحوال في ثلاثة أحوال it becomes فرعين obligatory upon every Muslim in three situations three circumstances where you're going to have it فرعين إهداها one of them حال النفير العام it's where the ruler tells everybody we got to go out this is called Nafir al-Am. And this is in the Quran. And if you are requested to go out, then go out. Light and heavily armed. Go out. Right? This Nafir al-Am is when the Wali al-Amr and the one in authority calls everyone in general, broadcast to everyone in general that they must come out. That it is time for jihad. Then it becomes wajib. Ijabatu who to answer him. It's a da'wah, invitation. And his invitation is an invitation that you don't have a choice. It's obligatory that you be there. You must be in attendance. Huh? qadarina min rijal. Upon those who are able to do so from the men. Al qadirina ala hamla salah. Those who are able to carry a weapon. You able to carry a weapon? Yeah, well, come on. Hmm? This is how it is. That's when it's fard ayn. Thaniya, thaniya tiha, the second type, is when the Muslims are involved in a battle already with the with, with the uh, disbelievers. Or you come upon them and they're in ranks, right? It is not for any Muslim at that time. And I don't mean them, a couple, three or four brothers on a corner. Some kafir called him something, or they did something to kafir in Jahiliyyah, and he wants his vengeance, and, you know, the, oh, brother, you know, jihad, Allah Akbar, let's go. You know, that's not jihad. That's not jihad. No, we're talking about, once again, keep it in a very general, international, you know, country, large population, ruler, keep the focus upon these issues. Because I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to keep saying that as if I'm playing your intelligence. But I, like I said, I recall those discussions, you know, that I've had with individuals who would read a surah sunnah by Imam Ahmad and come away with the most amazing matters. You know, oh, Imam Ahmad is talking about Imam of our masjid. You know, by any dunya has the right to disobey him. What is this? Ala qadirina min rijal. Okay. Before we get that, la yahillu li ahad. We read that. Min Muslimin, the Muslim doesn't have the right to run away, wanya turuk makano, or to leave his place, unless it is a strategy for fighting, or he's going to another group of Muslims that he could strengthen to grant the Muslims any uh, support and victory, or amna takdihi siyasa tikital. Yani the the strategy and the politics of fighting. Dictates that you make this move. And you're moving. It's a strategy. You're backing up but you're not retreating. Or you're retreating for a certain purpose. Or you're going to support. You understand what he's saying. Not running away is what he's saying. Uh, and he leaving a place, he said, for another place that's stronger. Gives the Muslim more strength from that. Say, well, in this position here, man, it's weak. Let's go there. We'll be stronger. Right? Against the adu, against the enemy. Right? So on this level, now if we, if we get here, we support the Muslims better, and we could, we could damage the kuffar, and we could, we could, you know, we could harm them better from this standpoint. Yani strategy. This is the only reason they will have the ability or the permission to, uh, move. Not some brother, you know, Tawalla Yom Zahf, turned his back, his knees are going up to his cheeks, and he's headed for Broadway. You know. He has no plans whatsoever to fight. This is not the case that the Sheikh is talking about. He's talking about somebody who's doing so based upon strategy. And I think the, the, uh, the difference is clear. 
The third matter, which makes it fard'ayn, and ain't fard'ayn, obligatory upon everyone, is when the kuffar, and this is what happens often nowadays, when the kuffar go into a particular country, of the country of the Muslims, then jihad is fard'ayn. But upon who? Some people are going to say upon everybody. No, the Sheikh said, Ala ahal al balad. Upon the people of that country. This is a misconception that's there. Man, they went to the land of the Muslims. We got to go. It's about, it's fraud. Because when they do that, it's fraud on everybody. Huh? No. Balad. Ala ahal al hadhil balad. Now, when is it, those are the three cases when it is fardain. وَيَكُنْ فَرْ كِفَايَةً Fired upon some, and if they do it, then the other Muslims are relieved of their responsibility. إِذَا رَفْ الْإِمَامَ الرَّعَيَةً The Imam raises the banner, but he doesn't give a general call. And those who want to come, come. Those who don't, no problem. Right? A campaign or whatever. You know? On that level. Then it's what? فَرْ كِفَايَةً Someone has to answer his call. Someone has to get in, you know, get ready to go, but not everyone. And then there's a jihad that can't be called fardain, obligatory upon every individual. obligatory on portion of the Muslims that if they do it, they relieve the others. nusra. It is from the way or the the the, the manner of nusra, supporting the Muslim. In Bab Nusra. So, some Muscafas come into a country of the Muslims, one of the countries of the Muslims. And one person from amongst us said, Man, they, they just attacked Iraq, they just attacked uh, Kashmir, they just attacked Afghanistan. Huh? What can he do? He himself can decide huh, to give his wealth or to go himself and fight with a condition. La yada'u. He doesn't call others to it. I say, man, you come, man. Me and you. Let's go. No. Himself. Who is not for him to push everybody else to it. Who will be enough to he? He can go himself. If he thinks that it will benefit. And that he will be able to defend the Muslim for that Because it's not fired up on him to begin with. You know. He might be taking care of his family. Learning something about Dean, giving some dawah, he's gonna drop all of that and he's gonna go over there and to be one person, you know, thinking he can do something. So it's not fart for him anyway. Not fart, I ain't no fart kifaya. But definitely if he wants to do that, if he wants to run to Serbia and deal with that, he wants to run to Kashmir and deal with that, he can do so on his own, but don't be trying to convince somebody else, oh come on, you gotta go too. We gotta go to, you know, like this. Now, al amr al the third matter. Wa ala'allahu ahamuha. And this may be the most important matter. An al jihad, that the jihad, la yakun, does not, is not to be, and should not be, and must not be, illa wara imam muslim. Except behind imam muslim. What imam he's talking about? Nah, nah, don't say Brooklyn, ah. What Imam? It's called Imam al A'zam. And I ain't talking about Abu Hanifa either. Imam al A'zam, the great Imam, the Sultan, the ruler of the country. The Imam al A'zam in Saudi, it's Fahad. The Imam al A'zam in Bahrain is that one. The Imam al in this one is that one, right? Of Morocco is that one. Imam al-Muslim. And the point is, some people will say, well, the situation that we're dealing with, you know, you know, man, it's different, man. Because the Muslims are like all supposed to be under one Imam. Right? Shokani and him knocked that down a long time ago. And they bring your alim, Imam from Yemen. And many others had knocked that down a long time ago. That if we're saying that a condition is that there be one Imam, one ruler of a country, the vast spaces between the Muslim empire. How would he even know at that time what was going on in other 
other cities and countries and what the people I need are. So there, he each said he can officiate and send governors, no doubt. But if there's in fact other I'imma, like the Muslims are now, then that's fine. They are the wali al-amr, and they are the imam for the particular Muslims living under their rulership. Fahimtum. So this has to be clear. So he says, Al-Amr al the third matter, wa la'alluhu ahammaha, and it may be that it's the most important matter, and al-jihad. For those of you who like to say jihad, and scream jihad, that this jihad that you're screaming about, shouting at the top of your lungs about, huh? la yakun illa wa ra'imam muslim, cannot be except that you're fighting behind a imam muslim, a muslim ruler. Imam Muslim, Muslim, not Kafir. Imam Yarfa Araya raises the banner. Now listen to about this this Muslim ruler, this Muslim Imam. Wa'indahu kudra, he has power, he has ability. Adadan the numbers, wa'udda, and the support, physically, weaponry, and the like. Alakital to be able to fight those who he has to fight, Manyalihi, who are closest to him or whatever the kuffar. Right? Mahimaya. At the same time, preserving the Muslims back home. And go out for jihad and then let the Catholics just take the Muslims there and you somewhere else. I'm in, I'm here in Russia making jihad. Oh man, he took over the whole, yeah, well, yeah, I'm raising the banner of Allah here. No, he mayat the Muslim, preserving the Muslim, those who are already Muslims in their places, and at the same time taking care of that. Now you tell me if a brother can't, you know, uh, don't even have the authority to to get away from a traffic ticket, right? He worry about thirty days for a traffic ticket. How in the world can he be imam of the Muslims? Huh? You don't agree? Allah. Well, let me call your name, huh? <laughs> Just joking with you. This is... Bakiya mas'ul anhu. Bakiya mas'ul anhu. Left is the thing that was asked about. Wa huwa duna idhin wali al-amr. Can I go fight without the permission of wali al-amr? Or idhan walidain. And the reason he's saying idhan walidain or permission of the parents, it's because of the hadith of the Prophet. Sallam. Man came and asked the Prophet, sallam, can I go make jihad? The Prophet sallam, said, Do you have a mother? Huh? For, uh, uh, within her behalf, you do jihad. That's your jihad. Birru. And the goodness to her. So this is what he means. You have to get permission, especially if it's not uh, the type that, 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 that in which he, and he, tamfira am, you know, where the Imam has said, you know, everybody come, you know. Like most of the time in the time we're living in, you have to get permission. He said, "How the tahtaj al tafsir?" And this is an important point also, even though we don't have much time. That our scholars they don't answer a question in any shape, fashion, or form. I mean, just you know, if you ask them, and I've heard the likes of the Muhaddith of Medina, Hamad and Sari, rahimahullah, and here Ubaid al Jabri is doing it. If you ask them a question, mujmil, summarized, concise, short, you didn't go get much detail. They say, wait a minute, that's questions much me. Short. You didn't get much detail, so I'll answer in accordance with what you ask. But had you asked with detail, like had you said Kada, what Kada, what Kate, what Kate, then I would have said this, this, and this. So this is how things are to be asked regarding the issue. And Ibn Taymiyyah has an area that he talks about in this regard also, which will help you in your discussions with his bees or Ahl al-Bidah, or people who don't have no ilm. And that is that sometimes they come to you with a statement which is concise and summarized. But that can be understood in a good way or a bad way. You are not to answer. I repeat, you are not to answer until you make sure which of them that they meant. And to answer the tafsil, you get the detail. What do you mean by what you just said? Once you got the detail, then you can answer. So this is very important to understand. He said this question is, I tahtaj ila tafsil, detail. Tahtaj ila tafsil. فَكَتَّبَرَ النَّبِيَ الصَّلَامِ إِنَّهُ رَدَّ عَنِ الْجِهَاءِ That he uh, told a man 
who and he, who wanted to make jihad to go back and take care of his parents or one of them because he they needed him. Well, either wali al amr, and the permission of the one authority is min bab siyasa. It's from the stand, stance of politics, from min bab al dar al fitn, removing the trials and tribulations, wa dar mafasit the harms. Wa hadha amr la bud minhu, and it's a matter that is a must. He repeats it, amr la bud min, it's a must. So if the wali al amr prevents someone that he sees a benefit in preventing from going to jihad, hopefully he'll be rewarded for his intention. Huh? Sinful for his disobedience, rewarded for his intention. The last thing we'll deal with, because we're not going to get to all of it, is this question that will help us understand some matters. Hell, your Jews, is it permissible? Al jihad ma ahl al bidah to make jihad with and he helping the people of Bidah. Did the kuffar against the disbelievers لنصرت Islam to give victory to Islam huh? can we as Muslims upon the Sunnah go and support Ahl al-Bidah or we'll have them in our army huh? we're with them and we're fighting against the kuffar Shaykh Allah says listen to his, uh, his answer نحن نبغض البدع We hate the bid'ah We hate the innovation And وأهلها And his people And those who practice bid'ah ونحذر من البدع We warn against innovation وأهلها And we warn against his people ونرد البدع We reject the bid'ah بالدليل With evidence And نحب الناس Push the people على السنة to be on the سنة وذلك من الجهاد باللسان and this that we do hating to people bitter hating innovation warning against bitter warning against innovators rejecting bitter with evidence pushing the people towards سنة this is jihad upon the tongue والبدع أمرها خطير innovation is matter is dangerous because it involves believing that the deen is deficient. It involves believing that the Prophet ﷺ was deficient. And finding fault with him ﷺ and, and his message. And that he didn't explain the matters Allah ordered him when Allah said, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ ذِكْرٍ We revealed to you the reminder. So that you would explain to the people. To the nas That you would explain to the people what is revealed to them. So you, by saying that we need to innovate something. You're saying that the deen is deficient. And that it wasn't completed. So we had to come with an innovation to complete it. وَهَذِهِ بِدْعَ These innovations لَيْسَ عَلَى حَدٍ سَوَى They're not on, all on the same level. مِنْهَا مَا هُوَ مُكَفِّرْ Some innovations make you kafir. Make you a disbeliever. وَمِمَّا هُوَ مُفَسِّقْ Some innovations make you a fasik, a sinner. Huh? مُفَسِّقْ Then he said وَنَحْنُ لَا نَحْكُمْ عَلَى أَحَدٍ and we don't judge or make a ruling upon anyone. Be innu kafir, that he's a disbeliever, or fasik, an evildoer. Hatta takum alayhi hujjat islamiyya, and to establish upon him what? The hujjah, the evidence, in which he cannot reject. Kama kala jalatha now, as Allah said, wa man yushakika rasul, and he who opposes the messenger. Min ba'dama tabayna huda, after the guidance has been made clear to him. And follows a path other than the believers. We'll leave him to what he has chosen. And place him in the hellfire. What an evil destination. And like the statement of Allah. Verily those who apostated. Went back on their hills. After the guy has been made clear to them. It is shaitan. Who made that fear seem to them? For the ayat, these verses, and anything that has the meaning of it in the Quran, also in the Sunnah, show that we do not declare anyone a disbeliever, nor do we declare anyone a fasik until the root, until the knowledge and the evidence has reached that person. Hatta until we make clear to him the truth from falsehood. This is the first matter. The second matter. نَحْنُ لَمْ نُكَفِرَ أَحْلَ الْبِرَى تَكْفِيرًا مُطْلَقًا We don't declare all of Ahl al-Bira, absolutely every innovator, 
a kafir, or takfir and amma, or general takfir, except the ones who their bidah is in fact mukaffarat, disbelievers. And the evidence has been made against them, like a raf, the Shia, the Twelvers we call them, if not Jafari, if not Sharia, those who America seems to want to rule, let rule Iraq now, huh? Khomeini and his guys, and these are kuffar, huh? What the Jahim, the Jahmiya, those who deny that Allah is overthrown, deny that Allah has any names or qualities, right? The Jahim, Wahdat al like some of the Sufis who believe that all of this is Allah, and all of Allah is this. Awwadu billah, wal hulu that Allah is inhabiting certain people. These are kuffar. This is bidah what? Mukaffara. That makes a person kafir. Wa ala hada upon this, fina yujuz al jihad ma al Muslim. It is permissible to make jihad with the Muslim, whether he is a mubtadian, an innovator, or sahib sunnah, a person of sunnah. Huh? You got that point, Jamil? Sahib sunnah. Huh? Lakin tahta rayatin under a banner, rafaha imam kama kadamna, kadamna. Yani that is raised by a ruler, Muslim ruler, imam Muslim. Huh? Not asabat groups or jamaat, you know, jamaat tablid, want to make jihad, or jamaat al huda, or jamaat this, or jamaat that, right? You know, this is not how, right? It's not permissible for us to form a jamaat and say, okay, la, let's make jihad, because one, you don't have a ruler, You're not ruling over anyone except those dumb enough to listen to you. Yani, those who find that they have a, you know, enough of a, uh, yani, ignorance to, to put up with that madness, then yeah, they put their hand in and we down with you and let's go. But the point is, that's not an Imam Muslim. That's not a ruler. That's not a ruler. Yani, everyone, yani, taking jihad and saying, well, let's do this and let's go that. Huh? Uh, so the Sheikh is saying it's permissible as long as they're bid'ah. It's not mukaffara. Ibn Uthaymain says, to my accent about the Rafida, he said, no, you can't do it with them, the Shia, the Kafirs. You know? Let Ahl Sunnah do their thing, let them go ahead and do theirs. We don't need you. But for instance, about mat- the Maturidiya, or someone whose bid is not mukaffara, you know, someone who, you know, is upon some form of innovation, and not fighting under his banner, we're fighting under the banner of what? The Muslim ruler. But there happens to be some person upon innovation within the ranks. But his innovation is not what? Kufr, mukaffara, disbelief. And this is why Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh of Islam, the Sheikh of Aqidah, the Sheikh of Minhaj, eh? the Sheikh of Da'wah of Firqat al-Najah, the Sheikh of Ta'id of Mansura, eh? he fought with a lot of Khurafi, Sufis in the, in the ranks, and al bidah when they fought against what? The Tatar. Eh? He had no choice, you know? Because what he was trying to do was protect the people of Islam. Right? But he fought with them and they knew his position. Sheikh uh, Islam in Taymiyyah had did so many rudud upon the Sufis, so many responses against the Shia, so many responses against the Asha'ira, so many responses against the Jahmiya, so many responses against the Mutazila, so many responses against the Karamiya, so many responses against the Qadariya, so many <laughs> I mean, you know, the man didn't leave anybody. Right? They all hated him. You know? They all hated him. So the point is, is that his fighting was what? Out of necessity. Just as if we go in one of the masajid of Ahl al-Bidah, whose bidah is not mukaffara, and we have no choice except to pray there. Right? We heard the adhan, so we go pray and we leave. Necessity. So necessity is never to be compared when there is not a necessity. If we are able to have a saf or ranks and a group of Muslims upon kitab and sunnah, you know what I'm saying? And we don't, we don't have any need for Ahl al bidah then of course that's first and foremost. But under necessity, long as we're under the banner of a legitimate ruler, ruler of a country, I know I understand, man, he ain't said this a hundred times, but ruler of a country, man who has the ability to, to form an army, you know, not talking about a hoodlum, you know, talking about a ruler. So this is something that 
uh, is important. So now you have Fard Ain Jihad that is Fard Ain, Jihad is Fard Kifaya, and Jihad that is Sunnah. Now you have you have to have the Idhan of Wali al Amr, and you have to have Jihad behind Imam. Now the way the Hizbis and the Takfiris get around this is they declare him Kafir right off the bat. You know? He's a Kafir. He can't be my Wali al Amr. He's Kafir. You know, well, I got you know. I don't have to fight with you know. I don't have to fight under him, right? So, what? Those who have some taqwa and some sense understand that you can't just kick a Muslim out of Islam because you feel like it. You know that uh, you know the jannah's not yours to let in who you want to let in, and you know hellfire is not yours to designate who you want to go there. You know, after you wearing the wrong shoes, you go to hellfire. You know that's not the case. But the reality of the matter is, is that things have to be done based upon hujjah based upon adilla, based upon following the aqwal of the scholars. This is basically some of what I wanted to say. He talks about the madhaharat, the marching, which to us, I mean the vast majority of us, it should be something distasteful anyway. You know, I mean just because you don't want to be compared to that mushrik Martin Luther King, you know, walking up this avenue and walking down that avenue and, you know, carrying a banner and shouting you know, for redress or whatever, you know, no justice, no peace and all that madness. This should be, you know, uh, something that the Muslim finds abhorrent. Uh, he talks about preparation, which maybe we'll get into some other time. But basically it amounts to uh, an e- increasing our iman and our taqwa first, because the purpose of jihad is to raise the, 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 the word of Allah, Tabarak Ta'ala. And to make the word of Allah superior, and to call the people to the worship of Allah Taala. So those who call to something should be the first and foremost up on it. And before they ask anybody else to come to that, they must be honored themselves. So from this standpoint, we have come a little bit to the issue of jihad, and hope that it gives you a little ammunition to deal with those who want to shout and scream about the matter. You know. Because I mean, nothing is stopping them or preventing them from getting on a plane and very well going to do some jihad somewhere if that's, think, if that's what they think they're going to do. It won't be jihad shari'i, the legislative jihad, the legislative jihad, you know. Won't be, it'll be an innovative jihad. Yeah, I mean, the help of Allah is not guaranteed since you have stepped, you know, out of his, uh, you know, limits and transgressed his boundaries. But go ahead if that's what you want to do. I mean, you know, better than hear you shout and scream and irritate us, you know, with this jihad, jihad, jihad at the top of your lungs. You know, we're tired of it. Tired of it. And you know, and, and, and what makes it bad is, like I said, the people don't know the status of those who they are dealing with. The Palestinian issue. Some of the shaykh, uh who lived at that time used to say that in the early, in the 67 war, Six Day War and others, that when Adhan was called, the Palestinians, many of them, so-called freedom fighters, would pull the trigger of their machine guns so they wouldn't have to hear that. And if Adhan is called, they're going to shoot up in the air so they don't have to hear it. Huh? This is a type of madness. People worrying about Iraq and crying about Iraq and don't even know who the Iraqis are. Not every time you hear about a Muslim cleric, he's Shia'i. Those who curse Abu Bakr, those who curse Umar, those who say that all of the Sahaba became kuffar except three. Salman al-Farsi, Abu Dhar, and Miqdad. Those who said the Quran that we have is only a third of it. Zira, if some increase has been made in it, وَنَقَسَ مِنْهَا كَثِيرٌ And a lot of it is lost. This is the madness that the people are up on. And this miskeen, this jahid, this one who has had, not, had uh, enough, not enough taqwa, not enough sense of respect to come learn the deen of Allah, is running his mouth about jihad and going over there and protecting the defending people he don't even know. Their leader Khomeini said to the Shia that went Afghanistan, Take it easy with the Russians, for when they leave, your real enemy you can deal with then. And he's the Sunnis. The Sunnis. And you don't know what Ahlul Raf did? 
You don't know what the Shia own? We got to talk about that sometime. It's amazing that our brothers don't know about the the the, the facade of Al Qama and how all throughout history the Shia have gathered with the Jews and the Christians and fire worshippers to attack the Muslims. And you see it happen right before your eyes. History repeating itself and people don't even see it. Because they don't pay attention to history. And they're not concerned about Aqidah. And I guess that uh, Abu Hassan Ash'ari in Maqalat Islamiyah just felt like talking about the Shia. And I guess that uh, Sheikh al-Islam in Minhaj al-Sunnah just felt like writing four or five or six volumes on the Shia. I guess that it, it's just been that way that Khatib Baghdadi wrote about, or wrote about them in Firaq wa Firaq. And Muhibbadin Khatib wrote his Khutud al-Arida, broad aspects of the Shia to, to let you know what these people are on. And we forgot all of that. We got to go back to 1979 where some of the ignoramuses, and unfortunately half of them have to be African Americans, ran up into the Washington, Masjid in Washington, and every one of them went to jail. And every one of them got some time for the Shia. Didn't know what the Shia was on. Didn't know what they was believing. Didn't know that they got du'a, saname, koresh, du'a where they talk and make curses and curses about what ka'uma. Call them the tawagid. We say the tawagid is Iblis. Anything that is worship other than Allah, they say the tawagid is Abu Bakr Umar. Don't know that they say that they're so called false Mahdi when he comes back. Who's, uh, by the way, in a cave. That's, as uh, Shaykh Hassan al here, Rahim Allah used to say before they, they killed him. Uh, and you can hear the tape in which they assassinated him because he's one of the staunchest. Uh, responders against them, wrote books against them. They blew him up. Rahimahullah. But he said about them that this Mahdi of theirs is in a cave that not even a rat's going to come out of. This so-called, this so-called leader, they have a belief they call Akira Daraja, a return. Where they're going to whoop Aisha. First they're going to kill Abu Bakr. And then bring him back alive. And then kill Abu Bakr. And then bring them back alive. And then kill Abu Bakr. Until they do it what? Thousands of times. Then they're going to bring Umar. And kill Umar. And then bring them back alive. And then kill Umar. And then bring them back alive. Until what? Until they do it over a thousand times. Then they're going to bring Aisha. Umar Muminin. The mother believers. And they're going to flog her. What are you flogging her for? Don't tell me you're flogging her for adultery. When Allah Ta'ala revealed ayat in Surah Nur, talking about her innocent, you kafir, you khabib, you dajjal, you still trying to say she needs to be whipped for adultery? There's no need for her to be whipped for adultery because it never happened. It is a fiction of your mind. Allah Ta'ala has said she was innocent. It was that which the munafiqeen and others lied about her regarding. And Allah sent ayat from Surah Nur, showing clearly that she was innocent of it. And you still have audacity to say, your so-called Mahdi gonna be there. Gonna whoop her. Whoop on Aisha. Raja. They have all types of qa'id. Guiding Allah. That Allah is ignorant about certain things. And then, oh, it becomes clear to him. Yani. These are the people that George Bush wants to hand Iraq to. You liberated the people. You claim from physical oppression, from getting a, from getting thrown in prisons, and now you going to imprison them in shirk and dalala, which is worse. Didn't Allah say the fitna is worse than killing? Fitna is shirk. It's worse than killing. Killing Muslims left and right. Slaughtering them. Children trying to, women with their children in the car trying to pass a roadblock, get blown away. But you won't touch a mosque. What mosque? A Shi'i mosque. In Karbala or Najaf, you won't touch it. It's holy. All the Shi'i do is commit shirk. Laylan wa Nahar, night and day, they commit shirk. They establish shirk. They institute shirk. They call it the shirk. And you won't, you won't touch that. And he said, subhanAllah, when are we going to open our eyes? Ya Ahlul Hadith, 
Where are you at? Are you asleep? Ya Ahlul Sunnah. Ya man yaqul inna kam ala min haji sal of sal. You say that you're on the way to sal of sal. Where are you at, man? Where's the end? Where's the information? Where's the education? Where's the raising? Where's your stature? Where's your status? Where you at? Everybody's voice is heard but yours. Everybody's spreading their bottom and you got to hop and you're not moving with it. Allah Ustan. Khair inshallah. Hadha wa sallallahu ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala ahli wa sahli wa sallam.